Hello ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, inies, outies and in between us, my name's Dan and welcome back to another Pat Reports. It's Thursday, June the 4th, 2020. In yesterday's report I told you how it's been alleged that pedo hunter groups are potentially breaching people's Article 8 of the Human Rights Act, the right to privacy. Yeah, the right to privately groom children and carry out horrific offences. Makes perfect sense. Well today, North Yorkshire police have issued warnings of their own after they confirmed they had arrested a 34-year-old man on Sunday evening after he was confronted by safeguarding kids online, a group of volunteers based in West Yorkshire telling people to leave investigations to the police because they've got such a great track record. North Yorkshire police confirmed that a man from Harrogate was arrested on suspicion of inciting a child to perform a sexual act and having indecent images of children. A spokesman said he was taken into custody at 10.45 on Sunday the 31st of May following a report made by an online child abuse activist group. The man was released on conditional bail whilst inquiries continue. Safeguarding measures have been put in place. They said this is a live investigation and we urge people not to speculate or post anything online that could hamper the course of fair justice. A spokesman for the force subsequently pointed out the problems that can arise from such groups chasing down potential predators. He said that in such cases when the footage is posted online, this is generally far too late to prevent hampering the course of justice and poses a serious risk of harm to everyone involved, including the group members themselves. He added the police service does not endorse online child abuse activist groups and we will not work with them unlike our highly trained officers in the online abuse and exploitation team and the digital forensics unit, they operate without any procedures to keep people safe. What an utterly stupid thing to say. These groups confront far more paedophiles than the police do, unless the police are in their briefing room. If the police did work with these groups, then surely we would get far more of these sickos off our streets. Outright refusing to work together shows what contemptible cretins the police really are. They would rather their ego be protected than admit that they need the help to achieve a goal. I will say however that although these groups live stream to protect themselves from false accusations from the confronted person I can understand how it could lead to issues with integrity on the case but surely if the police worked with these groups then could simply advise them to record the interaction still for evidential purposes and hold off putting it live until the case is over. This would protect the groups, help the police, and these groups would still have the footage later to put out at a later date. The spokesman from North Yorkshire Police went on to say that there is no way of making sure these groups act on reliable evidence, and we have seen instances of the wrong people being targeted, such as vulnerable adults. This creates unnecessary anguish and diverts vital police resources away from other victims. Yeah, like the police have a proven track record of acting on reliable evidence and never targeting the wrong people. The standard of evidence that is gathered is also often poor, they said. There are issues with legal disclosures and the way the group share their evidence publicly online before it has been tested at court. Like the police evidence isn't often laughable. In fact, in many cases, cases don't need evidence other than a constable's opinion. The police need to stop fighting the public at every opportunity and start to work with us. It really is like an ego thing for them. I mean, just let it go and start doing the right thing. You seem to forget that you are the public and the public are the police. It's just that you get paid to do it full time. Assistant Chief Constable Adrian Roberts of Cleveland Police, who was arrested and suspended from his job while being investigated by the National Crime Agency, is now said to have been cleared of allegations. Although the National Crime Agency can be tasked to investigate any crime, it is the UK's national and lead law enforcement agency against organised crime, human weapon and drug trafficking, cybercrime and economic crime that goes across regional and international borders. Roberts was arrested on unknown charges in April 2019 and suspended from his role at Cleveland Police, which has been rated as the worst force in England and Wales. A spokesperson for the National Crime Agency said, the National Crime Agency was asked to independently investigate and after a thorough investigation no evidence of criminal wrongdoing was found and no further action will be taken. However, no one is disclosing the allegations made against him.
Cleveland Police have said they can confirm that following the conclusion of the NCA investigation, Assistant Chief Constable Roberts' suspension has been lifted. The Independent Office for Police Conduct, which was originally passed the case to investigate, said last year that the alleged conduct matters were reported to have taken place outside of England and Wales. But the force, National Crime Agency and Chief Police Officers Staff Association have all refused to say what the allegations relate to. Last September, Cleveland became the first to ever be branded failing in all areas after inspectors found it was not preventing crime nor protecting vulnerable people. Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabularies issued a damning report rating Cleveland police inadequate and raising serious concerns about public safety and ethics. Inspector Phil Gormley said he was extremely concerned about the performance of Cleveland police in keeping people safe and reducing crime. He said the way that Cleveland Police treats the public and its workforce is inadequate. He added, I am very concerned at the lack of ethical behaviour in the force. Senior leaders should be acting as positive role models, and many are not. Her Majesty's Inspectorate said it was the first time a police force had ever been graded as inadequate in all areas it inspects. Effectiveness, efficiency and legitimacy. Cleveland Police, which covers areas including Middlesbrough and Hartlepool, has been played by a series of scandals over six chief and seen and seen six chief constables in as many years. Sean Price was sacked for gross misconduct in 2012 and Mike Ville resigned in January 2019 amid a probe into serious misconduct allegations. Other, other staff have been reprimanded for racial discrimination, malicious fake prosecution, unlawfully spying on journalists and inappropriate sexual behaviour. Well, it's certainly nice to see that pattern of transparency still permeating through the police, even though they love to use the word at every opportunity. Residents living on a street hosting a McDonald's drive through in South End in Essex were given 24 hours notice by the council that they cannot park outside their houses for up to two weeks in order to make way for the reopening of the drive through and make way for long queues expected. Yes. South End Council are telling the public that they cannot park outside their own homes in order to allow a corporation to make money and that their customers are not inconvenienced. Locals were given just a day's notice to move their cars from outside their homes as the McDonald's branch in Eastern Avenue in South End reopened its drive through on Wednesday. A spokesperson for McDonald's said our team in South End has been proactive in engaging with the police and South End Council to help manage the impact that reopening will have on residents. Last week, the restaurant team wrote to residents in anticipation that there may be some temporary disruption and we appreciate their patience over the next few days. Ron Woodley, South End Council Cabinet Member for Transport, said we were asked to work, to work closely with Essex Police to ensure a temporary and safe traffic management system in place. This is to accommodate an expected influx of visitors to both sites as McDonald's reopened all their drive through restaurants to the public. He said we are suspending parking on the carriageway along Cokefield Avenue and Pantile Avenue between 10am and 10pm. The suspension will be in place for up to two weeks if necessary, but this will be under constant review and reduced and removed as soon as possible. If the police and council wanted to ensure safe traffic management, then surely providing that the vehicles parked outside their homes are not parked dangerously, then the onus is on those wanting to get a Big Mac and not on the residents of that area. I mean, I understand that the council no doubt get a nice bit of wedge from the businesses in that area, but their first priority should of course be the residents and not the corporations. Telling people they can't park outside their homes for the benefit of profit for a corporation is completely ridiculous and goes to show the council's priorities are certainly not what you would expect. I would suggest the residents in that area peacefully protest by sitting down in the road and not moving. Former Police Scotland Constable, 34-year-old Derek Kennedy, who left the force on medical grounds, has been placed on the Sex Offenders Register and had his sentence deferred by Dundee Sheriff Court while social work reports are obtained. A deferred sentence is basically suspending the sentence for a short period of time, in this case until the reports are compiled. However, when you hear why, you will wonder why the reports were not expedited and sentence carried out immediately.
Kennedy was caught with thousands of images and videos and admitted the offences taking place between August 2016 and July 2019 after a police raid on his home. It was revealed that police searched Kennedy's house and seized a mobile phone which contained a huge amount of vault images and videos. Further discoveries were made on two laptops with Kennedy telling police that he did not know why he had them. Kennedy, although he had no previous convictions, was found with 1,118 indecent videos, 4,707 images, 810 of those videos and 506 of the images classed as category A and with some of the files said to have involved animals and sadism. Kennedy pleaded guilty on indictment to taking, permitting to be taken or making indecent images of children at Dundee Sheriff Court. However, as you would expect, his defence used a good old mental health mitigation, saying that Kennedy had significant mental health issues. Mr Finley said he has been diagnosed with anxiety and depression. In the earlier part of the libel, he was in employment throughout his adult life. He was a serving police officer, but he had to resign for medical reasons. There's a history of budge, budgeting mental health difficulties. After yesterday's report, I'm surprised his defence hasn't used the infringement of human rights article to, to a right for privacy to mitigate his actions. Absolutely incredible. As with almost all police constables in the UK who seem to believe that it's one rule for them and another rule for us, we stay in Scotland now with two police Scotland constables who have been given suitable advice for flouting, man I hate that word, the social distancing rules after holding a garden party on the hottest day of the year. Now I already know what most of you think about the rules, but as I've said before, if people are trying to impose those rules on us, then they should be accountable for failing to follow the exact same advice. Police Scotland constables 22-year-old Emily Watson and 23-year-old Judy Hand had photos taken of them breaching the rules after Nicola Sturgeon relaxed Scotland's lockdown measures on Friday to allow Scots to see their friends and family in groups of up to eight people outdoors and two metres apart from one another with people only meeting with one other household at a time. The girls came under fire after a member of the public reported the photo that was posted on Instagram, although it's now been deleted, to police chiefs who gave both suitable advice. Now, whatever your views are on social distancing, I'm sure you'll agree with the following at least. The source has said that both of the girls had been out enforcing these rules and all the while they're living it up with their mates. To see them brazenly huddle together for a photo without taking their own advice is just unbelievable and deeply concerning. Scottish Tory Shadow Justice Secretary Liam Kerr said, it is unacceptable for police officers to break the rules they enforce while on duty. Given they are both at the beginnings of their careers, they should be reminded in no uncertain terms about the seriousness of their position. This must not detract from the excellent work our officers are doing in the coronavirus fight. PC Watson, based at Midlovians, Craig Miller Police Station and PC Hand, stationed in Peebles, were contacted by various reporters, but as yet, they've been unavailable for comment no doubt advised not to speak to them by their bosses, who also confirmed that they had been spoken to. A spokesperson said, we're aware of the photo. Suitable advice has been given to the officers involved. Big thank you to the channel Patreon supporters. Of course, your support is truly appreciated. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.